Hi friends! Today is the start of a new reading vlog where I'm going to be reading five middle grade fantasy novels. I'm really excited about this project because I actually quite enjoy middle grade fantasy but I feel like it always languishes on my TBR. I just for whatever reason rarely go to pick up middle grade but most of the time when I do read it I end up enjoying it and so I think this video is going to be a lot of fun because it's going to help me get to some books that I've heard wonderful things about. Like I said I have five books on my TBR for this video but first up I want to share with you a book from the sponsor of today's video Shadow Mountain Publishing. That book is Champion's Quest The Die of Destiny by Frank L. Cole. You're going to see me continue to work with Shadow Mountain Publishing over the next several months and they have been wonderful to work with. With. I really appreciate their support of everything I'm doing on this channel and I think they have some fantastic books coming out. So I'm really excited to check out Champion's Quest. This is a middle grade fantasy novel coming out in August so you don't have too long to wait. One of the big selling points for me is it's a literary role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons but make it middle grade. Yes please. If you didn't know, I recently embarked on my own Dungeons and Dragons journey. I play a couple times a month with some of my best booktube friends and it's been such a blast so I'm really excited to check this out. The other cool thing about this book is it features characters who are racially and ethnically diverse and from a wide array of backgrounds including two characters who've been growing up in the foster care system and one character who deals with anxiety and panic attacks. I love that we're getting some of that mental health representation in a middle grade book. I think that's huge and so important so I'm really excited to read this. I'm going to read you a little bit from the back of the book and then I'll show you the other books I'm going to be reading. Lucas Silver's life is about to change. He thinks it's because he's made plans to escape from his foster home and make his way to New York but then he and his friend Miles and two girls they're acquainted with Jasmine and Vanessa find Hob and Bogey's curiosity shop and agree to play a game of Champion's Quest. So I think that's the like D&D type game. When the four kids walk out the front door of the curiosity shop they immediately immediately discover they're no longer in West Virginia, but transported into the game and a wild fantasy world of dangerous goblins, brutish ogres, and a powerful witch. They must work together as a team, overcome their real world weaknesses, and believe in themselves and each other if they are to outwit, outplay, and survive their foes in this ultimate quest to defeat a treacherous monster. I am really excited about this. It sounds like a whole lot of fun. Thank you to Shadow Mountain Publishing for sponsoring this video. So this is the first book going on my TBR, but wait, there's more. Next, I'm going to be reading Love Sugar Magic, A Dash of Trouble by Anna Mariano. I have heard really wonderful things about this book. It's the first book in a series about a girl who's from a family of Mexican witches who have baking magic. They own a bakery and put magic into the things that they bake, and it's like a coming of age story, and I hear it's adorable and has wonderful family dynamics, and I'm really excited to read it. Then I'm going to be reading Pahua and the Soul Stealer by Lori M. Lee. This is an upcoming release in the Rick Riordan Presents line. It's coming out in September and I have an advanced copy of it and I've been wanting to read it so this seemed like the perfect opportunity. It's Laurie Ann Lee's middle grade debut about a lonely Hmong girl who discovers she's a powerful shaman warrior in a quest adventure inspired by Southeast Asian mythology. I love it. I'm excited to read this one. Then I'm finally going to continue on in a series. I read the first book and really enjoyed it and I've been wanting to continue with it since then so again great opportunity to do it. I'm going to read Keeper of the Lost Cities Exile. This is book two in the series by Shannon Messenger. It's got portal fantasy and like I really really enjoyed my experience with book one so I'm excited for this. And then lastly a book that I've read the first little bit of with my seven-year-old but like we've kind of fallen off and I want to finish it because I want to see what's going to happen so I'm going to read it for this vlog and then maybe we'll read it together more later too. It's Eva Evergreen Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. It's so cute so far. I've read like the first 44 pages a while ago and I just want to get back to it. It's about a girl who is a young witch but she only has a little bit of magic and she wants to become a full witch but she has to complete this quest and there are things against her and it looks so cute and I'm really excited to read it. So there you go. Those are the five books that I'm going to be reading. I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to take me. In like a week our family's going on vacation to Washington DC so you might see some of that footage in the vlog. I have started reading the first 
first book for this project. This is A Dash of Trouble. So far it's very cute. It follows a young Latinx girl who's like 11 years old who doesn't know her family is keeping a big secret that the women are brujas. They have magic and their bakery includes sometimes making magical pastries and breads and things. And so after feeling really left out by things, she uncovers this. She snoops around, finds out kind of what's going on, and feels even more left out by her older sisters and her mom and her aunts. And I, I think is gonna end up trying to do some magic on her own. She's just now finding out about it where I'm at. But yeah, very cute, very charming. Uh, so far, I am enjoying it. So today is a Thursday. Saturday, our family is going on a little vacation to Washington, D.C. and... Hey, honey. Yeah, gonna... we're going to do it. So I will be taking you guys along with me. I'm going to be bringing some of the books for this vlog and reading them while we're there. It's the first time we've traveled anywhere in like a year and a half, uh, but we're getting an Airbnb and I'll show you guys around, so it'll be fun. I am going to keep reading a Dash of Trouble. I will update you guys probably once I finish it. I don't expect it to take me very long to finish this book at all. And so far, it's been a great start. I finished reading A Dash of Trouble and it was in fact adorable. This was very cute. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. It's got a lot about family and friendship and our main character definitely makes some mistakes and gets herself into some sticky situations literally. Um, at one point she accidentally does a spell that messes up and ends up shrinking one of their friends to like Thumbelina size and has to figure out how to undo all that mess. This was great. It was really, really fun, really cute, really enjoyable. I gave it four and a half stars and I would definitely read on in the series. I love it. She's got all of these sisters. She's the youngest in a large family. So she has four older sisters and is really trying to keep up with them. The parents are lovely. I love the parents in the book and the family relationships which you don't always get great families um yeah this was very charming definitely a win <laughs> Hey guys, 
So we are in Washington DC on vacation as you've probably seen some of the footage and I've not been doing a ton of reading which maybe isn't shocking. I feel like I always overestimate how much reading I'll get done on vacation but I have made some progress on Champion's Quest. Um, I'm about halfway through it and it's so much fun. I'm really enjoying it. I think especially if you've ever played RPG style video games, you'll get a kick out of it. It's making me laugh. Just like a lot of the details, like um, there's a moment where somebody is given new clothes and armor and they will go to grab them and they disappear in a bunch of sparkles. And they're like, wait, where did they go? And the person's like, you're now wearing them. <laughs> it's just like little stuff like that. It's really funny. It's sort of like taking, because um, it's, it's about this group of kids who end up inadvertently in this magical game world where they have to complete a quest to escape back to the real world. And, you know, they have to like deal with all of their own issues and work together, but it's really charming and really fun and funny, especially, like I said, if you've played RPG video games before, there's a lot of just like small details that are really fun. Um, so I am thoroughly enjoying this, really getting a kick out of it. I like the characters. The world is cool. I would have eaten this up, especially as a middle grade reader. So, so far, really good. I will check back in once I've probably finished it. I'm kind of getting through this pretty quickly. got plenty of books at Mahogany Books, which you can also find online. It's a black owned bookstore in Washington, DC. And they just opened a new location as well, which apparently is three times the size that we, the one that we went to. Which we got plenty there. Yeah, so <laughs> go figure. Guess where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go check her out. This is fun. Great, bye. bye. <laughs> Why I thought I would get a lot of reading done on vacation, I don't know. I've been doing some. Um, I did, in fact, finish reading Champion's Quest last night, and it was great. I really enjoyed it. It's super fun. This is definitely the sort of thing that, as a kid, I would have eaten up, and I'm actually thinking I might give this to my seven-year-old to read because I feel like he would be pretty into it. It might be like slightly like I I feel like you could give this to a younger the younger side of a middle grade audience which is technically 8 to 12 but like you could give this to younger readers and I think it would be pretty appropriate for most of them as long as they're okay with like monsters being fought but like the way it's set up is nice because 
even though there's fighting and stabbing and whatever, like it doesn't actually hurt physically. It just like decreases their energy. And if they die, they get sent back to the beginning of the game and have to start over again. Uh, you know, much like a video game, which is fun. It's really cool. I would have been so into this as a kid and I, I just really enjoyed it. It's super charming. And of course, all of the characters kind of learn lessons through the process and it's heartwarming and I, it was great. I really liked it. I would read on in the series and this is something that I would probably pass on to my own kids. So if you're looking for that kind of a great fantasy story that is something that I think you could pretty easily give to even a younger reader, Champion's Quest, man. So my plan originally had been to try to read all of the rest of the books for the vlog while we're on vacation. But uh, since it's Saturday and we're leaving Monday, <laughs> clearly that is not happening, which is fine. It just means that the reading vlog will go on into next week. That said, for the rest of the trip, I think the book I'm gonna work on reading is Eva Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch because I'm already partway into it and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. I think it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys enjoy some of the clips of the adventures that we have had in Washington DC. It's been really fun, just really exhausting. It's really hot and we're having a lot of good family time. Um, but by the end of the day, I'm just like so tired. So I'm getting some reading done, but it's taking me longer than usual. But um, Champion's Quest was great. Definitely would recommend. And like I said, I mean, I think, you know, 12 year olds could read this also, but it's nice to find a fantasy book that would be appropriate for the younger side of that age range. I will check back in with you all once I have another reading update to give you. Hello, I am back home. I have kind of a haunted ring light thing happening. So if the lighting and the colors like flash or keep changing like that, <laughs> I don't think it's really haunted. I probably just need to get it fixed, but uh, it's a problem. So, you know, we're just gonna go with it. I have been reading Eva Evergreen Semi-Magical Witch and it's adorable. I got about halfway through last night. This is the thing with middle grade fantasy is they are such quick reads and just so joyful most of the time and this is definitely that. It's super cute. It's following this young girl who just has a little bit of magic going on her novice witch's quest alone. She's a 12 year old girl and going to this distant town to try to prove herself so that she can keep her magic and become a full-fledged witch like her mom who's super powerful and it like you know her mishaps and her friends that she makes and it's just really charming it's really charming and really cute and I'm thoroughly enjoying it I feel like I've just had such a fun time with this vlog and it's a good reminder that middle grade fantasy can just be so fun and joyful and also quick to read so probably I will finish reading this today. <laughs> I will say because I read so much less than I planned to on vacation, this vlog is taking much longer than I had anticipated, but I am hoping that I can get through the rest of the books pretty quickly. So enjoying this one. She also has a little magical fox, like a fire fox, who gets into lots of trouble and like chews up her magic books and her witch's clothes and is very naughty and she has to deal with that and yeah it's just it's really it's really really charming I am loving this I see why so many people have been recommending it so far so good I will check back in with you guys once I have more of an update probably once I finish reading Eva Evergreen to give you my final thoughts and then we'll move on to the last couple of books here with an update last night I finished reading Eva Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch and it was adorable this is exactly I think what you want a middle grade fantasy story to be. It's fun and whimsical, but you also have wonderful characters learning things about finding inner strength, about friendship, about family, about helping their community. It's just, it's really great and really fun and really charming. And it's an interesting one too. I know it's the first book in a series. So what it does is it wraps up the main story arc from this book and then ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So it makes makes me want to read book two and see what's gonna happen in book two. This was really cute. There's friends and creatures and she's just this like sweet, generous 
girl who loves people and gives of herself. If you're looking for a good middle grade fantasy, this is another one that I would recommend. So far we're doing amazing on this vlog. Honestly, I have been enjoying everything that I've been reading, which I think is a testament to probably the quality of a lot of the fantasy that we're getting published for a middle grade audience right now. Um, but yeah, this was fun. The world building is fun too. Parts of it, especially the food, do feel kind of inspired by Asian culture. The author is Japanese American and so you can see some of that kind of bleeding into the writing. I feel like people who like Studio Ghibli films would probably really enjoy this and it's another one that I think would be very appropriate for a younger middle grade audience. You could probably give this to an eight-year-old if they're a stronger reader and they would probably really enjoy it. There's some level of danger but it's a lot about friendship and nothing super super bad really happens for the most part. I just... I really loved it. It was great. Then this morning I started reading the next book, which is Pahua and the Soul Sealer by Laurie M. Lee. Um, I did learn through the course of reading the book, you pronounce her name Pahua. I was like, is it Pahua? I don't know. It's Pahua, in case you're wondering. And so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm about 100 pages in. It's a longer book. It's a little over 400 pages long. This is a pretty interesting one. It's inspired by Hmong culture, which I didn't really know anything about. The Rick Riordan Presents line, Rick Riordan always writes, Kind of a letter at the beginning of each book introducing it and in his letter he talks a little bit about the book and recommends reading the author's note and the glossary before starting which I did end up doing and it was interesting I think having that insight then going into the story. The author is Hmong, she's an immigrant to America and her family I think were refugees from Laos. Like I said I hadn't really heard of the Hmong people before, I didn't know much about them. They have an oral storytelling tradition and so she talks a little bit about how that influenced the way that she wrote this book because she's taking some of that mythology and oral traditions and putting it into the story about a young girl who can see ghosts and see spirits and gets herself into some trouble on a path to perhaps becoming a shaman warrior. And so far it's really great. It's got a wonderful sibling relationship. It's got this kind of introverted girl who doesn't have a lot of friends who's learning to be brave and wants to save her brother. I won't spoil like what exactly happens but so far it's really good. I'm enjoying the writing. I like the way that she's weaving a lot of Hmong culture and mythology into it. Apparently the Hmong people live throughout parts of South and East Asia. Some were in Laos, some in China, and other places as well. So it's definitely interesting learning about it. One thing too that I'm finding interesting about this is some of the spirits that they have are a bit reminiscent of Russian folklore actually. So for instance, I, I'd have to look up like how you pronounce it. Um, the glossary is very helpful because it gives you the pronunciation for Hmong terms that are used in the books. I recommend checking it out. But the um, there's three spirits in the house, and one of them, the Dakatsa, is the spirit of the stove. It's like this little spirit that they give like rice offerings to that lives in the stove and protects the house, which is very reminiscent of some of the spirits in Russian folklore and mythology, which I am mostly familiar with because of reading The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Anyway, I'm just finding that really interesting. She also has a spirit cat best friend named Meve, who kind of is snarky and funny. Uh, yeah, so far this is really great. So I will check in with you guys once I have made some more progress. I'm hoping that I can get through a lot of it today, maybe even all of it, and then start on my final book. Hello, it is the next day and I wanted to check in because I did finish Pahua and the Soul Stealer and I really loved it. I actually think this is among my favorite of the Rick Riordan Presents books. It's one of only two I can think of that I've given five stars. This just really worked for me. I loved the characterization, the pacing. It was also funny. I feel like she gets a sense of humor in there. It's very fast paced, very easy to read. A lot happens and it's interesting. It's also got twists and turns and it's definitely setting it up for sequels in the series, which I would also be interested in reading. This one I would say does get a little more intense, a little bit darker than some of the other books that I'm reading for the vlog. I actually think when I do my wrap up, what I might do is 
rank them in terms of ages that I think you might want to give them to uh, because I do feel like there's a variation. It's always tough with middle grade because sometimes you read middle grade books where I'm like, yeah, easily I could give this to an eight-year-old. And sometimes there are books I'm reading where I'm like, yeah, this reads like it's for an 11 or 12-year-old, somebody who's more of a preteen, getting into the whole like liking boys or liking girls or whatever kind of stage and that's kind of a whole different thing but all of that does exist in middle grade and even amongst the books I've been reading. So this one doesn't have that in particular this is kind of halfway in between so maybe a mature eight-year-old who can handle some more heavy topics so for instance her dad had left their family and it deals with some of that but you know for some kids who've dealt with that it, it might be something helpful. But overall, I really loved it. I liked the friendship. I liked the family. I just thought it was a really fun ride. It was very well paced. I had a great time with this. My final book for the vlog, which I have in fact started, is this. It is Exile, the second book in the Keeper of the Lost City series by Shannon Messenger. This book is a little bit older. It originally came out in 2013 and I do think it shows, I feel like, and I think I felt this with the first book in the series as well, that there are some things where I'm like, you know, they weren't really doing sensitivity readers so much back at that time. And there are for sure some moments where I'm like, uh, like that could have been handled better. And already I'm about 100 pages into the book so far. And I think the one of the scenes as an example that has stood out to me so far is our main character meets a guy who has some scarring from burns and there's a line that says he looked like he should have been hands handsome if it wasn't for the burns and it's like stuff like that that I'm like you're gonna put that in a middle grade book I just mm. So there's some of that kind of stuff, but overall I do think the world is really fun. This one has portal fantasy. In the first book, our main character finds out that she was actually born an elf and had been raised in the human world, and so she discovers this whole other world kind of exists, and there are secret societies and sort of political machinations that want to use her and her powers, and they are very lengthy books, <laughs> um, but a lot of fun. So I'm finding it really easy to dive back into and kind of remember one thing that's kind of fun is this book starts out with her finding what are they calling them an alicorn so it's like a winged unicorn which is is fun there's lots of glitter and gemstones and magic and uh, definitely again the kind of thing that I probably would have eaten up as a kid so I am enjoying this this is one I remember from the first book um, that reads a little bit older in this book our main character is 13 and her love interest or one of her love interests because there's kind of a love triangle so like one of them is about her age and one of them is like 15 so it it ages itself a little bit up um, so I wouldn't necessarily give this to somebody on the younger side of that readership but so far it's been fun basically I'm enjoying all of the books that I'm reading and this is making me wonder why I don't pick up middle grade fantasy more often. Do I sound like a broken record yet? Maybe. So uh, I will check back in once I've made some progress on this. I'll try to do at least one more check-in before I finish it unless I just really breeze through it. I expect I'll probably finish the book tomorrow but we'll see how far I can get tonight. I'm actually going to be joining my friend Jessica Williamson on her channel for some productivity sprints. I think she's probably going to be working on like writing she's a writer but I'm gonna be working on reading this book so that'll be fun maybe I'll take a quick clip of that I feel like it's a good way to kind of get me moving in the right direction so we'll check back in with y'all later good morning so last night I got about halfway through this book and honestly I'm really enjoying it it's fun it's fast-paced there's lots of twists and turns there's lots of adventure and um, you know like hidden secrets that we don't know about. There's a secret rebel group called the Black Swan that might be good or might be bad and we don't really know. And there's heads of the organization and people in government excuse my kids there's heads of organizations and people in government who have secrets that they're hiding and Sophie is trying to figure out what's going on and I'm just really enjoying it it's very interesting it's very fast-paced and easy to read so yeah it's been fun I'm gonna try to finish it up this afternoon and then I will give you my final thoughts on all of the books I finished the last book yay this was very good it was very interesting I feel like her books are great because they have lots of twists and turns and kind of keep you wondering what's going on there's magic there's secrets uh, there's a lot of young people drama like tween 
drama. We have kind of a love quadrangle with some mild jealousy. It doesn't get as intense as full-on YA books do, but there is some of it. So I feel like this is definitely a series that you would probably give to like a 10 or 11 year old, not an eight year old, just in my opinion, but I definitely enjoyed it. I, I think it was great. So here are all of the books. Honestly, this was a lot of fun. I had a good time with all of these. I liked all of them, which was great. So let's talk about ages, because I feel like that's the biggest takeaway that I kind of have for this. I think the book that I would be most comfortable giving to somebody who is like seven or eight would be Champion's Quest Die of Destiny. I feel like you could definitely give this to a younger kid. It's a lot of fun. I loved the way that it brought video games to life and I think especially if you have a kid who's into playing video games this might be a really good pick for them because it's cool and immersive and taps into things that kids are already into. That's not to say that you couldn't give this to an older kid. I think it would be fun for like a 12 year old as well. It's just a nice one because I feel like it really spans that age range where diff kids at different ages might take different things away from it, but I wouldn't have a problem giving it to a younger kid. The other one that I think you could probably give to a younger kid would be Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch. This again was really cute, really charming. It gets a little bit more intense with some of the things that happen than like a champion's quest, but not dramatically so. I feel like if you have a, you know, reasonably mature seven or eight year old, you could probably read this along with them or give it to them. But it's really fun and charming. And you could, you know, I think it could work throughout the middle grade range because it has a lot about friendship and family. Um, another really good one. So these are the two that I feel like would really work throughout that entire range. The one that falls somewhere in the middle for me is Pahua and the Soul Stealer. Another really fantastic book, but I do feel like if you're giving this to a younger reader, you probably just want to know something about who they are and whether they're going to be ready for some of the more intense content in this. I would say this gets a little bit darker. It deals with more heavy family issues, like I mentioned earlier, in terms of her father having left their family and not having any contact with him, and just some similar things like that, like more difficult family dynamics. Not to say that there aren't younger kids in that age range who might be ready for this, but it's one where I would say, you know, like use judgment in terms of who you're giving it to or be prepared to have some conversations about some of the more difficult content. Then we have Love Sugar Magic, which for the most part is really fun and cute and charming. The only thing that makes me a little hesitant, depending on the child, is that part of the plot has to do with boy-girl crushes and people liking other people. And like, I don't know how things are for kids today, but I remember that becoming more of a thing when I was like 10. So I feel like an eight-year-old, it depends. If it's an eight-year-old with older siblings where they kind of know that that's a thing that people do, they might be fine reading this because the main character isn't necessarily into that, but her friend is. So again, one where you would kind of use your judgment, that's really the only thing here, but it is relatively mild. So I feel like you probably could give this to a younger kid, depending on the kid, um, but really, really enjoyed that one. So obviously the one that I think trends quite a bit older is the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. And in some ways that's great because there can be a struggle to find books that are good for that younger YA range of like 12 to 14 year olds. And I actually think this series would be really great for that age range because it does feel a bit more mature. The main character is 13 and she feels like a pretty mature 13. Some of her friends are older teenagers. It's dealing with the early versions. It doesn't get deep into it. And I think later in the series it might, but it's, it's dealing with the early versions of like first crushes and jealousy. And it focuses a lot more on friendship, but it does have some of those elements to it. It. This also can get quite dark where bad things happen to kids and adults. So I feel like this would be probably too intense and too scary and too mature for like an eight or nine year old. Maybe you could give it to a 10 year old, but I feel like actually the series would probably be really great for the younger end of that spectrum. So just my opinion, but that's where I would say that these fall on the spectrum of who they'd be appropriate for. All of them are great though. I had such a fun time with every single one of these. 
fantastic middle grade fantasy and this makes me want to pick up more of it. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about a middle grade book that you really love, something you thought was really fun. It could be a middle grade fantasy or if you want to talk about something else, feel free to leave that in the comments down below instead. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.